Whether it's music or podcasts, people love to take their audio everywhere these days. The Bose frames are a new way to do that. Now Bose calls the frames audio sunglasses. We're not sure if this is a new kind of sunglasses, a new kind of headphones, or something in between, but these are a very unique new product that do something that pretty much not much else can do on the market, allowing you to hear your tunes no matter what you're doing out and about. They're very, very much built for active people, bikers, hikers, runners. They do a lot of cool things. Now, if you're like me, your first question is probably how do they sound, followed quickly by how do they look, and followed quickly after that by how do they work. Uh, let's go through all of it right now. Now right off the bat, you can see these are modeled around the Wayfarers, the Ray-Ban Wayfarers, the classic sunglasses. Now Bose will probably not talk about that, but this is the Alto model and it is very much, very similar to the Wayfarers. But you can start to see some differences here. There's also a Rondo model, which is smaller, more rounded. I highly prefer these guys. Now when it comes to the lenses here, they are not polarized, but they do block 99% of UVA and UVB, and I took these around all through Portland when it was sunny out. It actually is sunny sometimes in Portland, and they work great. There is a little bit of a bump over here, but it's pretty camouflage when you wear them. And when you look a little closer, you can see all kinds of little pieces of tech inside here. All of the Bluetooth antenna, the battery, and all of the audio stuff is stuffed in here. So they're a little heavier and a little bulky on the side, but as you can see, as you get up closer, there are these little vents and these are where the speakers are held. They're right inside here and they're designed to beam right into your ears so you don't have to push anything in there. There's nothing uh, barring your ear canal, nothing stuffing in there. So it's a really interesting way to go and it makes you wonder again, how is this going to sound? Well, spoiler alert, they sound pretty good with one kind of major caveat. Now once you start looking a little closer, you're gonna see this little gold bead. This is your main control button right here. It's your multifunction. it does play, pause, it does song skip, calling, all of it is handled right here. There's even a microphone on here so you can take calls, of course. Uh, but this little bead is gonna be your control center and it works great because it's right there on the earpiece. As you can see, you can just kind of clip it right there. The one thing they don't have is volume control. I really hope that they're going to add that in a next generation. And I also hope there's going to be a next generation because I think this is a really good first step. Uh, but volume control would be nice. You'll have to control that on your phone. Otherwise, it's a really succinct, really functional little package. And then to turn them off, just set them on their top for two seconds. When it comes to setup, Bose is kind of taking the AirPods approach here, meaning it's super simple. You just download the Bose Connect app, it walks you through a few steps, and you're ready to go. And in the Connect app, that's also where you can find the Audio AR apps. Now there's some interesting things in there. There's some soundscapes, some sort of games that help you uh, stay on track with your workout. And there's even one that has a bunch of courses, golf courses downloaded to it so you can take them uh, golfing and it'll sort of guide you through the courses. Pretty cool, but very limited right now. I think of them as more of an audio device than an AR device. And also they're limited to iOS right now. So if you have an Android device, you're sort of out of luck. All right, so now the big question, what about the sound performance? Honestly, I was blown away when I first put them on by how clear and accurate and detailed the sound is. That is uh, until the bass kicked in, and that's when I realized there is a serious limitation here when it comes to bass. It is rolled off hard on the low end, and that's not to be, uh, that's to be expected because there's physical limitations to what you can do with a very tiny speaker driver. That said, once you sort of get used to the lack of bass, it's really cool how these things sound because your ears are totally clear. There's only a couple of other devices that sort of do that in this uh, organic kind of way. And you can sort of splash it in with just a little bit of audio or you can kind of ramp it up, but you still have full awareness of what's around you. It's so great for taking a hike, taking a bike ride, stuff like that. Uh, and also what's kind of cool about it is the sound just sort of appears in your head. It feels like it's just sort of beamed in there and you've just got this stereo soundstage moving through your head. Now at $200, there are a lot of limitations here to kind of think about before you put down your money, of course. Uh, one of those being you don't really want to wear it to the office unless you like to rock sunglasses around the office. Uh, that also goes for the gym. Although you can swap out the lenses for prescription lenses from a third party vendor at an additional cost, of course. Another limitation, only 3.5 hours of battery. That's a rough one. Uh, we don't even like to use true wireless headphones anymore that have that little battery and they also have a charging case. Whereas 
the frames do not have a charging case. So that really limits how far you can go with these things. Also, they're only IPX2 water resistant. We appreciate having some water resistance, uh, but IPX2 is basically just splash proof. Uh, we would like them to be more like IPX4 where you can get them really wet, especially in inclement weather. And finally, they're not that great for noisy areas, uh, especially downtown here. You really have to crank them. They still work but you're gonna get a lot of the bang and clamor of the noises around you. It's sort of just indicative. It's just how it's going to work for this kind of a device, but just something to be aware of. So yes, there are a lot of limitations, but I just have to say I had a fantastic time with these things. I took the frames on a bike ride on a sunny day, and there I was enjoying basically every detail, of course, except for the major bass parts, but basically every detail of my favorite music while the wind was just whipping through my hair. I can't say how much fun that is. So for active people who really want a new kind of way to get your tunes, the frames really do live up to that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Go ahead and leave a comment. I will try to answer as many questions as I can. You can see more videos right over here. Please subscribe to this page for more videos like this one, and you can see the full review at digitaltrends.com.